Sub-Saharan Africa was identified and is continually identified as one of the most vulnerable regions in the entire world to the impacts of climate change. This is a, you know, a clear-cut case of complexity. Africa is affected by climate change, by environmental risk, by environmental degradation, in many diverse ways. If you look at a place like uh, Senegal, you have the interior, which is dry, which is hot, which is part of the Sahel, and is facing those issues. You move to the coastline of the same country, and we're not talking about drought, we're not talking about desertification, we're talking about those coastal threats, flooding, and all of those issues. You have countries that have to juggle the two, then you have places where it all collides, what we call multi-risk scenarios, and that's very common in African countries. Most migration in Africa that's attributed to environmental factors is going to remain, first of all, internal within the, the African regions, within the African continent. San Luis is the second biggest city in the country of Senegal. And Gendar is a small neighborhood, small geographically speaking, but an extremely densely populated neighborhood that is famous in many parts of West Africa for its fishing. And in this community lives between a river and the ocean. There's not much room to move. 97% of people in Gendar are dependent on the fishing sector, directly dependent on the fishing sector. The community of Gendar faces a number of risks. It faces sea level rise, coastal erosion, soil salinization, salt creeping into to their land. It faces flooding. I was speaking to um, a fisherman in, in Gandhar and, and I was asking him about all this. You know, he was retired at that point, but retired fishermen are perhaps the, the best people you can talk to about knowing what's happening and what's changing. And he said it quite simply. He said, the fish migrate, so must we. And it, it's such an obvious logic. Climate change hasn't created the idea of fishers having to move. They're well used to moving to different parts of West Africa. What they do to respond now is to move more and more to other places. And Specifically, they're going to Mauritania. They're only about nine kilometers away from the border with Mauritania. So this isn't necessarily a long distance. Sometimes they're traveling quite far into the north of, of Mauritania. They're moving to places where there are more fish and where there are fewer fishermen. Mauritania doesn't have a culture of, of fishing. So they move there, they fish, and then they normally come back. So they're not permanently migrating to Mauritania. What they're doing is trying to make their livelihood through this mobility um, and then coming back perhaps only for a month, a year in many cases, but then bringing back the, um, the money that's earned, um, bringing back more expertise. And they're using that to adapt in Gandhar. So it's not a story of permanent migration. It's a story of international migration that fuels adaptation in the community of origin, in Gandhar. So what that money they use for is to relocate. So they use that to build often second homes that are away from the coastline. Many of them are, are building um, in the same areas of San Luis, some of them on the mainland, and then they're starting to commute to, to the ocean. So we often think about inter internal migration as a stepping stone to international migration. In Gandhar, it's a little bit the opposite. It's using international migration and the fruits of that labor in order to stay. Mm -hmm.